No road, no car, no, no electricity, no water. They teach us how to use a rifle. That I think that's all rifle. I use it, dismantle it. We thought we are Indians. Of course so you are. When we I mean, you are Indian. Like, even <laughs> so she had a lot of... Uh, so you brought a shaman for her? Yeah, I brought a shaman and then... Uh, Did that help? People, that's the beautiful property I've been staying last night. It's called Rowing, Rowing Homestay. Uh, here, it, not far from downtown Rowing. It's very peaceful, you see, as you can hear. And um, I'll, I'll, get, I'll go inside later on to show you, to introduce you to my host, Mr. Jamo. This kind of nice property is growing a lot of, uh, uh, it's growing some betel, betel trees there. So that's the, that's the property. You see, very nice and neat. And uh, oh, the smell is great, eh? Yeah. So I think you say uh, kushbu achi he. Kushbu achi. Kushbu achi yeah. Achi is, yeah, is achi feminine. Is, uh, yeah, for the lady. I should be I should be saying achi, and the lady achi. should be saying achi. Achi, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Revealing mistake. <laughs> yeah. What are you cooking? It smells awesome. Yeah, I'm cooking chicken. Okay. Yeah. It smells very good. You've got a beautiful kitchen here. Yeah. <laughs> nice and neat. So here is Mr. Jamo, my Hi. host. Uh, we had a great chat as I was telling you this morning. And that's that's the daughter? Yeah, my daughter. What's your name, darling? Alia. Alia. Alia, pleasure to meet you. Alia. And uh, she just came back from summer camp where she was learning archery and what is? Taekwondo, right? Taekwondo, eh? Yeah. Oh, you learn how to defend yourself. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great chat before uh, with Mr. Jamo, you know, and his a bringing so we can maybe have a chat later on okay. uh, a quick chat you know just for people to understand like the massive difference from one generation to another that's right if that makes sense yeah so later like you know after lunch or something we can have a yeah. quick chat Mr. Jamo just uh, admitted that he put more chili in my food <laughs> just to because uh, yeah I got a little cold uh, yesterday running in the rain and he said to me if you put chili then that gets you sweating and yeah, yeah. Cle clears your nose. Yeah, because your body gets warm. Yeah. Because you, <laughs> sure. you, 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 you got a cold because you got a, it was raining yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that's going to help. That's how we do it. That's <laughs> how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was telling you guys this morning, I had a very interesting chat with Mr. Jamo. And uh, for me, it's amazing because um, when I look at his kids, so your kids, you were saying, uh, you have three kids, eh? Two are here, one is uh, studying medical. Yeah. She's in Tunsikia now, she's yeah. taking an exam. Yes. And the life uh, they had compared to his life, you know, as a kid is like, it's uh, so different. Um, Mr. Jamo was, was telling me he grew up in a village not too far from here, you said 12 kilometers? Yeah, it's 12 kilometers from here. And they had, they had nothing, like you had, like, there was no, you were saying there was no, no cars, no... No road, no car, no, no electricity, no water. Uh, yeah, you, you were telling me you, you used to drink water from the... Yeah, trunk of the tree, I mean, uh, it used to, some sort of root comes down, mm. so you have to cut it up and then put a bamboo, Thing and then next morning you go and collect it. Oh, so that's how you. Uh, uh, yeah. You you probably made your body very resistant, eh? <laughs> <laughs> was it common for you to lack water? Yeah, because uh, there was no the village that I grew up. Uh, there was no well there, no river. No in, well, yeah. Uh, no no river in uh, in and around. Yeah. Whatever. And no, yeah. So no electricity, none of that. And you were saying uh, before that your mom. Sometimes to make you a little, uh, you know, to make you happy, she would walk all the way to right. Roing yeah. by foot, by foot, and yes. bring some dal back. Dal. That was like Christmas. Yeah, dal, dal, because we hardly eat dal because we don't grow dal. Every day we eat boiled vegetables. And it was available in the jungle, okay. seasonal vegetables. Okay. So. But dal was like a bit of a fancy meal. Yeah, that was fancy meal because. It tastes different and uh, yeah. we hardly add it. And then one thing that my mom brings is sugar. Yeah. Some sugar. Yeah, oh yeah, because <laughs> sugar was also a fancy item. Yeah. Sugar, uh, we hardly get to eat sugar because that was very luxurious. Everything. It was luxury, yeah. yeah. 
Crazy. And we don't yeah. see any vehicle at that time. Yeah. There was, uh, we see big trucks. Big trucks coming uh, and... Uh, for the logging. Yeah. They used to do, carry big, uh, they used to cut down the big trees and then they carry that log off. So we used to sit at home and then... And look at them. Look at them. <laughs> like they are like space shuttle or something. And uh, <laughs> when it passes, it makes a lot of dust. And oh yeah, I can the imagine. The smell of the, the dust with the diesel was so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I so, still remember we yeah. running after the vehicle. It's just to get a smell of the that. smell of that uh, <laughs> diesel. Now I feel okay. it's a diesel. Eh? Yeah. At the time, it was very nice because... <laughs> wow. And um, something very interesting uh, you mentioned to me is that then when you, your, your older brother put you to school, yes. and then you moved to Delhi. Yeah. Man. And and Delhi must have been a shock. I mean, it was a shock because you explained to me a couple of stories uh, coming from a village out of, like, you know, in, in the jungle pretty much to Delhi. And you said to me you were shocked by the heat. Yeah. First of all. I think uh, it was month of uh, May, June, I think. Yeah. And um, the first time I, I took a flight mm. from Debrugar. Yeah, so first yeah. time you got on a plane <laughs> as well. Uh, yeah. That must have been a shock as yeah, well. Yeah, because I, I had never seen a cinema. Uh, plane in my life. You, you, even from your village you wouldn't see any... Uh, no, we didn't, no. Uh, the, we didn't come any, we didn't see any helicopters or any flight at no. the time. But you were saying that growing up near the border of China, at school they will teach you how to um, use those old school uh, yeah. rifles. Yeah, uh, when we were young, I mean uh, kids, the government of, I mean the military they used to come uh, they do some uh, couple of 15 or 20 days camping in our village. Okay. So they teach us how to use a uh, rifle. That I think that's old rifle, 404 rifle. And they tell us how to, you know, uh, use it, dismantle it. Yeah. And then uh, when you go to the jungle, how to tell somebody behind you that I'm going this direction or that ah, direction. Without, without making noise. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, it was in case it was due to the... Like, Potential Chinese threat. Yeah, it was potential uh, because uh, I think 1960, I think 62. Yeah, that's when they... There were a conflict. We yeah. didn't know that, but later we came to know. Uh, yeah. Because that's why we, everybody in our area, they speak Hindi. Yes. Because uh, they, they taught us, you know, uh, Hindi become a medium of instruction for us because it was emphasized so much. Yeah. You, so you were telling me, you grew up, you obviously were speaking your mother tongue. Which was, what was the name again? Idu. Idu, yeah. which is a tribal language. It's tribal language. Yes. And then at school you were learning Hindi. Hindi, yes. But then when you moved to Delhi, you felt like, because when was it in Delhi? In the 80s, 70s? Yeah, 19, uh, 1990s. In the 90s. Yeah. So you realized that other Indian thought they didn't know you were Indian. Yeah, because uh, for us, we thought we were Indians at that time. Yeah, of course so you are. When we I mean, you up. are Indian. Like, even, even, <laughs> that's what he was telling me. He was like, I grew up, we knew we were Indian. But then moving to different parts of India, yeah, it was a different land, feeling. Yeah, when I land up in, in Delhi, I felt uh, because I had some couple of uh, Japanese friends and then uh, from friend from Kenya. Yeah. They were studying with me in college. We were treated differently. Yeah. Because we tried to speak in Hindi because our Hindi was not good as them. Okay. So they make fun of us. Whenever we go, I mean, they take even a rickshaw, they extra charge us I mean, for everything. Yeah, he was telling me, like, for example, you get in a public transport, the buses, they would, yeah, they would just give you the tourist pricing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we are, we are the same for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember we went to Taj Mahal and uh, it wasn't Taj Mahal. We, went, uh, we were staying in a queue yeah. uh, to get the you know, entry pass. Yeah. We had an argument. Because they said you are your line is not there. You have to go stay in the other line. I said, no, I am an Indian. We are an Indian. Uh, we we need to be pay, we need to pay the normal that Indian pays. Yeah. Now they said now you will have to give us some proof that you are an Indian. So yeah. in Delhi, it must have been hard sometimes. It, it is very. It was very difficult. Yeah. It was very difficult. But then the rest after my graduation, we somehow happened to stay there for many many years. Yeah. So he, he had a food uh, a restaurant. Yeah. Restaurant in Delhi for many years. How many? Like eight years, you said? Yeah, almost six, uh, eight years. Eight um, years in Delhi. Uh, so that must have been a completely different life from like what you, you know, yeah. growing up here, coming and running your own restaurant in Delhi. That's already a far cry. And then you went to Bhutan. 
to do some construction work. Yeah. Uh, and then you started your travel agency. Yeah. Oh, it's started to rain now. Yeah. And where you, obviously, that's when you started to travel a lot? No, uh, I, I started uh, after my graduation. I ended up in working in a private company in Delhi. Okay. Then uh, somehow I couldn't uh, do it continue. So I started a business. Okay. I, I uh, tried to run a restaurant yeah. maybe for some years. It was doing very well. Yeah. And then uh, I thought, uh, why should I stick on to this only, you know. So yeah. then uh, I started, we started a travel agency. Then we tried to promote all of Northeast. At that time, yeah. it was very difficult. Then, the, you know, business didn't, didn't do well. Yeah. So I asked one of my brother who was doing a construction work in Bhutan, in Hyderabad. I said, why don't you come to Bhutan? So I went to Bhutan. Yeah. I picked and you up spent some years there. Four years. I went for a two years project. Yeah. So they were, I couldn't complete my work in time because there was some problem in Assam because most of our labor comes from Assam at the time. Yeah, you, you were telling me you had some uh, labor fighting each other. Yeah. From different uh, background. You uh, couldn't complete. And then from there, I spent in Bhutan in two projects. Yeah. From Bhutan again, they said, okay, your work is not done here. Why don't you take up some other work in similar projects? So yeah. From there, I went to Uttarakhand okay. in their prayer yeah. at Bhagirathi. Then again, there the work couldn't complete as per the schedule. It so seems, um, yeah, it <laughs> seems tricky to uh, undertake sometimes business in uh, Yeah, in India. In India. Uh, the head of the project, he said, why don't you... Meanwhile, why don't you take up another one? I mean, this it will take time. So why don't you go to Leh? So yeah, then, so then you move to Ladakh. <laughs> yeah, we went to Leh in Indas, Nimamazo. Uh, there somehow it was a very small project. And then also it was construction project. Yeah, it was construction project. And then finally... So, yeah. And then finally you, you came back here. Finally, I had some domestic problem. I had a problem at home. So I decided to come back. I wound up everything in Delhi. Yeah, you, you mentioned your siblings. Yeah, my... Unfortunately, uh, of my Mr. Jano lost three of uh, his siblings. Sibling died in the span of four years. So I had to wind up everything and try to start a new life here. <laughs> and, and you're doing good. I mean, you have a beautiful house. You have a nice car. You have some little <laughs> trees at the yeah. back. Uh, he has a, a chicken farm. Yeah, I run a... You, you're growing some oh, veggies as well? Yeah, I, I have a small piggery. Yeah. And I'm on a... 20 or 30 pigs, then I, I run a poultry. Uh, oh, poultry, yeah. Poultry, I have poultry. Then do some pretty jobs. Yeah, <laughs> and you see, so now, he, that's what I was telling you before, he feels like he's retired. Uh, although he's only he's in mid 40s, but he feels, and I understand, he feels like he's done enough now. Okay, yeah. now he's here. I'm here, I'm re mentally I'm retired. Yeah, mentally he's retired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had a very uh, interesting life, you know. For me, it's uh, amazing to speak to you and get to know like how far you you've come, yeah. you know, from this living in a jungle in a small village to run a restaurant in Delhi to do project construction in Bhutan. So it's it's a great message uh, that you know, even if you come from a very poor background, if you have the the thrive, the motivation, you can you can do a lot of good things. I didn't see my children going, my two, two of my daughter, son and a daughter. The younger one now I'm staying with him because I was always in the project. I couldn't spend my time. Yeah. I didn't know how they grow so much. Yeah, <laughs> it goes quick, eh? Yeah, because... They uh, grow fast. Eh? I don't have a much, uh, memory with them, my two of my elder kids. Because you were too busy working. Yeah, I was busy working. No, yeah. That's why I try to spend quality time with my yeah, and you're doing youngest well. one. You're doing well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you wanna you wanna show show me quickly what you have at the back? <laughs> Why not? So Jamo was telling me very interesting. I didn't know. So in a betel tree, you get obviously the the fruit, yes. the betel, the nut, yeah. and you get you can get up to 150, 100, 150 yeah. per, and you you can harvest twice a year. I uh, we have it twice a year. Yes. Yeah. So and then yeah you can you can sell it obviously it's an extra extra so, income. My purpose of planting this bitten land was, you know we, I have to pay the revenue from my plot. Yeah. So, you know I can do anything else besides plant. Uh, if I plant it at least I can pay off on my old age because I, I don't have a government job. Yeah. So uh, to pay off my you know land yeah. revenue yeah. at least they will give me some. That's more. true. That's true. The battle backup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you live around here and you chew pan. Come, 
Come here, you can get some. <laughs> I planted uh, some more in my villages, in my village, and yeah. about uh, 4,000 crops I have. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, okay. This, I just... So this like, is this is more like for... This is just for uh, maybe, you know, it keeps cool in uh, winter, uh, yeah. in summer. When it grows up, it will give me shade in here. Yeah, true. That is something very interesting. You said this is the traditional house. Yeah, this, this house. Yeah, we, we tribal need to have a traditional home because uh, our life revolves around, you know, in a, in a, in a, we do a lot of uh, semantic puja. Yeah. I don't know, we don't, people say we don't believe in, we do believe in God, but uh, we don't have a name for the God. Okay. So the God and the devil is the same person. Whenever something, somebody falls sick or maybe is not doing well, it's because of the, you know, spirit. So we believe everything there is in spirit. To so, do, so. to appease or to do puja, yeah. we need to have a traditional home. Okay. Because the shaman will not be comfortable doing all... Doing it in the main house. Main house. So yeah. I need to have this. So that's why you got this. So one. When my, Very interesting. My daughter was not well, so I had to call uh, you know, shaman. Oh, so your, your elder daughter? Youngest one. The youngest one? Yes, she was not feeling well. Probably that was in viral. Ah. But still, like, we got scared. Yeah, of course. We went to hospital and then she, she was hallucinated. I mean, she started seeing big thing and becoming small and thing like that. Mm. So she had a lot of... Uh, so you brought a shaman for her? Yeah, I brought a shaman and then... Uh, Did she, that help? Yeah, mentally, you know, it gives you... Oh, yeah. Nothing else has, is affecting her. It's because of the Veda. Because doctor said, because change in the Veda, she's suffering. So the, he also says, it's nothing to worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> That's, that's yeah. interesting. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, that's a very peaceful life you're leading now. So th thanks a lot for uh, you know for the chat yeah, and telling yeah. me about your childhood and all. For me, it's very uh, very interesting. Yeah, because for me also, it's some sometimes I keep uh, you know wondering. It's got contrast. Yeah, such a contrast. Yeah. Because my parents never went to school. I went to university. I studied there. Yeah. I did the job. Now yeah. my, my my mom is still alive, but she's not comfortable living with me. Yeah. She's very happy living in the village. Yeah. So imagine, you know, just within two generations, having Jamo's mom, who was walking kilometers to buy some fancy sugar or dal, to now your daughter <laughs> that has access to, you know, all yeah. kind of technology and all. It's, the world is evolving at a very speed. Fun, it's very it's very insane. In my childhood, I've not seen, seen a television or yeah. telephone because people used to say, or oh, somebody sitting in Delhi, when he speaks, you can hear it at your, at your place. I was wondering, how come somebody sitting in Delhi speaks and you can hear? Yeah. But that is true through the satellite. It is. Yeah. We didn't have that at the time. Yeah. Because my, till the class eight or nine, we never, I yeah. never saw a te television. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks a lot for the chat, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Jamo. Yeah, really appreciate it. And thanks for your hospitality. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a very good host. So y y if you guys, uh, you know, from India or other countries are traveling here to rowing, make sure you come and, and visit him. Yeah, I'm most welcome. He's going to look after you well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so rowing homestay. You're on Google Map, eh? Yeah. I yeah. think, yeah. Rowing homestay. Yeah. That's it, guys. Okay, for now, I'm going to take the bike soon and start riding probably towards uh, Tesu. Let's go. Welcome to Tezu. It's an army camp right here. Okay, here we are downtown. There's a big clock tower right in the middle of this roundabout. And now it's going to be time for me to to find an accommodation. I have no idea where to go. 
Let's take your left. Okay, so I just need to follow that local in his blue car. He nicely told me, oh, follow me, I'll show you a hotel. I love that, you know, people in Ninja are always willing to uh, to give you a hand. Oh, Hotel Highway, that's the one. Is it this one here? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll go and ask. Yeah, yeah, I'll go and ask them. Red is not this one here. They can, I can tell you just some another another one. Uh, what is the name? Oh, don't worry. I'm just gonna go and I'm check just, it. I'm, I'm just right, right over there. This one here, Pondi, Pondi so, Hotel. Uh, that, that one is my uh, friend shop. I'll just yeah. right there. Okay. Just go and check your hotel. Oh, okay, okay. I understand. Thank you so much, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So. Seems to be a cool cafe next to it, bakery and cafe. Hotel Highway. <laughs> Hotel Com Restaurant. <laughs> Jeez. 